We should have just built the brick house. It might have been faster. That was an embarrassment. An embarrassing loss by the New York Knicks from the Cleveland Cavaliers. The game seemed close, but the Knicks couldn't make a shot. That looked like one of the worst offensive games I've seen from the Knicks all season. We're going to break down exactly what happened in this game, why the Knicks got embarrassed in MSG, and why this is a continued problem that we need to correct. All of this and so much more today. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of any of the new content. And now, let's get started. The Cavs get revenge on the New York Knicks and clearly embarrassed us. If you watch that game from start to finish, the amount of shots that the Knicks missed, they could have laid a brick house for a number of different families last night because they built a ton of them. I can't count the number of shots they missed. Let's take a look at what the final score was and a little bit of the game breakdown from the players. So as you can see here, shout out to Fred Katz from The Athletic, the Knicks lost this game 95-89. to The score seemed close, but the game, far from it. Because it was terrible to watch. One of the sloppiest games I've seen the Knicks play all season long. It may be early, but I don't care. It was still sloppy. The Knicks are now 2-3 and three on the season. Brunson, 24-5-4. 8 of 23. Quickly, 18-5-4. and four. DiVincenzo, 16 off the bench. He was a bright spot. Robinson, 6-16. Six Another bright spot. Randall, 6-6-4. Six six 3 of 15 from the field goal. It was just... I can't even put it into words. Guys, how embarrassed I felt as a fan watching that display. Not only on the offensive end, because defensively, besides maybe quickly... And Isaiah Hartenstein at times, Mitchell Robinson, obviously, Grimes, definitely. Nobody else is really doing anything on defense. And at times, the team defensively would collapse, allowing other players to get open. They had a lot of open threes. And I knew that the threes that they missed in the first game, they would start making. The Knicks made a brick house. I'm sorry to say it. They Five of 30! Five of, that's 17%. Five of 30 from three. The Knicks were bricklayers last night. They were bricking every shot. And it was not just Grimes or Quickly or Josh Hart who all had their moments that they were bricking shots as well. It was our main two stars. RJ was out last night with a sore left knee, so we're not going to include him in this. So shout out to RJ Barrett. I hope he gets better. But Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle combined 30 points. 8 of 23 for Brunson. 3 of 15 for Randle. 0 of 6 from 3 for Randle. 0 of 2 from 3 for Brunson. No free throws made for Randle. You're not winning games like this. RJ Barrett was out of action last night. He was basically your leading scorer in certain games and clearly one of the best players for the Knicks when he's on the court. So he's gone. So now you got to fill the void. I was looking for Quentin Grimes to step up. That didn't happen. I was looking for Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle to respond and step up. Clearly didn't happen. I don't know what's going on with the offensive futility that I'm seeing from this Knicks team, but they can't buy a bucket. Everything is hard. Why is everything so difficult? The other team seems to get whatever they want, whenever they want. They pass willingly. They get open shots. They make open shots. The Knicks? Oh no. Far from it. Our shots are difficult. The shots that we even get, they are magically going in because they're difficult. We are never getting open shots. When we're passing the ball, it's not passing within team play. It's passing to try to get the ball out of your hands to either get the ball back or try to make a smart decision with a few seconds left on the shot clock. It looks like the same style of basketball as last year, only the difference is Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle are not hitting on the same level. Something is going on 
That is clear as day. Brunson does not look like the same offensive player this year than he did last year. I'm not saying that I want to ring the alarm bells. I'm just saying it's a noticeable difference that he's not playing the same way last year as he did this year. I don't know if it's FIBA, tired legs. I'm not sure. But there is a difference to how he's playing this year in terms of last year. If you compare the two, there's a difference. Julius Randle, I don't know what's going on. Tom Thibodeau still thinks he's going to come along and it might be the ankle surgery from the summer. As I was told, Randall is fully healthy. He entered camp fully healthy. And credit to him, he doesn't take any type of injury concern and says, yeah, it's the injury. He says his shots are going to fall and he's not taking anything or putting anything on the injury and putting that as a reason as to why he's performing bad. Now, Julius Randle may not be leaning on that injury from the summer But Tom Thibodeau, he seems like he might be doing that because that's the way he's trying to explain Randall's bad start here because there's no way else to explain it. Randall is having a very poor start offensively to start this season. Defensively, he's up and down, still not good enough. Passing wise, I thought he took a step forward, but in these last few games, he's taken a step back. Jalen Brunson offensively definitely doesn't have it. Everything else He's still doing JB-like. He can still take contact JB-like, but the mid-range game, not really there as much. Three-point range, not really there as much. He needs to figure it out offensively. Everything else JB's doing seems like it's there, but offensively, he has to figure out his game because the Knicks are going to need him to be on if they have even a hope or a breath of winning these next few games, especially the next game against the Milwaukee Bucks. We got to make sure we remember that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the team stats because we can look at and harp on Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle all we want to. But let's go ahead and take a look at how the team did against the Cavs as a team. So looking at the team stats, you can clearly see here Cleveland beating the New York Knicks 95 to 89. Cleveland shot way better from the floor, 43% to the Knicks 35%. Compounding that, if it wasn't bad enough that we couldn't shoot the ball good enough, We shot 17% from three, and they shot 38% from three. 38. 38% to 17. That's the story of the game. 43% to 35%. That's the second story of the game. We can't shoot. We can't make anything. It's embarrassing. If I was watching the game live at MSG, I would have felt like I got robbed of my money. I hated what I watched last night. That is not Knicks basketball. Because as much as they were doing on the defensive end and making it hard for the Cavs, the offensive futility is terrible. If I saw that again in the playoffs, I'd be shocked. We cannot have a repeat performance of this. We need to figure it out. And it starts with our big three in Jalen, Julius, and RJ Barrett. But no shade to R.J. Barrett because he was injured during this last game. I hope he gets better. But we need our big three to be on and get better each and every game. Because if Brunson and Randall are going to give you this production each and every night on this type of shooting, the Knicks are either going to lose or going to get blown out. If the Cavs had hit more shots, the Knicks would have been blown out. If Max Struess hit more of his open jumpers, the Knicks would have been blown out. And that's what I'm looking at here. This is scary. We can't guard the three very well and we can't make any threes. And it seems like we can't make any twos. What are we going to do if Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle are not on? Who else is going to help this Knicks team? This is concerning. We need to step it up And we need to get it together. Let's go back to the team stats and see where else the Knicks need to step up. So as we can see here, the Knicks also again, 18 assists. They may have won the turnover battle 13 to 18, but they passed the ball 18 times. Cleveland didn't do much better with 22, but 18 again. What happened to the 30 assist game? Where is it? We need to play more basketball that is fluid, that has everybody touching the ball, that we're passing and we're playmaking more. 
If we do that, we give ourselves the best shot to win every game. If we don't pass the ball, we're not going to win games. It's as simple as that. On the rebound side, the Knicks beat the Cavaliers 50-46. to Offensive rebound-wise, they beat them 16-6. to Heavily beat them on that side of the ball. Let's go to blocks, 3-5, to kind of close. Steals, the Knicks had 10 to the Cavs, 7. And then personal fouls. Cleveland fouled a lot. 27 to the Knicks, 16. So credit to the Knicks for not fouling a lot, but they couldn't use the Cavs foul to their advantage because they still lost this game. And they lost this game against a Cavs team that was not at full strength. Missing Jared Allen, missing Darius Garland, two of their key players on that team. So you're not defending at a high level. And not only that, your offense is terrible. Brick layer status. 5 of 30. 17% from 3. Straight bricks against the Cavs. You're not beating any team in the NBA like that. This was one of the worst games I saw all season, albeit a short season still. It was still one of the worst games the Knicks have played all season long. I wish I could take back the time that I took to watch that game because of how bad it looked. I didn't like it at all. What about you guys? Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts about the game. Did you like what you saw? Could you stand to watch it? Do you wish you got your time back after what you saw last night? Let me know in the comments below because honestly, guys, I would love to hear from you. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.